students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada, not far from the city of Vancouver. I hope that everybody is having an awesome start to their week, or I guess it's midweek for many of us now. Uh, welcome, Pooja. Hi, Tran. Sukya, nice to see many of our subscribers in the chat. Welcome, Carolina, our chat moderator. Uh, students, this is a speaking part one uh, IELTS class with the uh, speaking section, and we're going to be talking about watching television. Uh, it is a, a subscribers chat class. That means you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, to join the chat. It's very simple. Just click the subscribe button on the channel page. So do it now and you can join the chat. Students, uh, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Check us out there. We will actually be using these websites today uh, to uh, talk and uh, practice the speaking section of the IELTS exam. This is our academic IELTS website here at aehelp.com with the blue background. Click this big red join now button to subscribe to our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. And uh, as you can see, we are official British Council IELTS test registration centers and certified agents. So you are in great hands with us. Um, also, um, you can join us for general IELTS at gieltshelp.com. Again, just click this big red button. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access and it doesn't cost a lot. So uh, it's really worth your investment to maximize your score on your next IELTS exam. Uh, students, uh, we do have um, apps, you just saw them blink right there. It's Academic IELTS Help and GIELTS Help in your app store. And for schedules, free vocabulary, grammar tips, videos, um, check us out on Instagram, IELTS underscore AE Help and GIELTS Help. So join us and begin your journey to a great band score on your IELTS exam. Um, students, the class schedule, before we get to that, um, if you ever have questions, you can send me an email. It's uh, adrian at uh, aehelp.com. And our class schedule for this week, we've got speaking part one right now uh, for subscribers. Um, we've got uh, reading for members tomorrow and then speaking part two for subscribers. Uh, we're doing these subscriber classes because we want to encourage students to really kind of just follow us. We have a program that we follow and if you're a subscriber and you participate regularly, it's going to really give you the best chance to maximize your scores. We will have task one academic writing this week and task one general uh, writing this week as well with lots of speaking practice going on. Okay. Uh, Parm's asking the Instagram ID of Parm. The Instagram ID was IELTS underscore AE help. Okay. All right. Um, so speaking part one, um, I got Henry there uh, sitting kind of on or standing on my head. Um, speaking part one, it's the first part of the speaking interview. Your speaking interview takes about 12 minutes. And speaking part one, you get a couple of icebreaker questions. Uh, they ask you for your identification, then your name, um, and then some icebreaker questions like, do you work or study? And what do you do in your leisure time? And then uh, they start in on some general questions that target kind of a specific topic. And you can never really guess what that topic is. Um, it's just some general topic and it's about you. Okay, that's what you have to keep in mind, that it's about you. So, when I took my IELTS exam um, about a year ago, uh, the topic was maths, so dealing with math. It was actually almost exactly a year ago to the date. Um, and um, 
This one is about television. So, you know, the examiner might say, let's talk about television. So just repeat these questions after me because these are the questions we will practice today. Now, keep in mind that, of course, in the real IELTS exam, you do not have this luxury of knowing the questions in advance. So that's why you have to practice regularly. Okay, here we go. So just repeat these. How often do you watch TV? What is your favorite TV show? Where in the house do you keep your TV? Is it healthy for children to watch TV? Have TV shows changed since you were a child? If you could make a TV show, what would it be? Now, uh, you saw this little blue bubble pop up beside me because that's my first tip for you for today is answer, explain, example. So that's what you want to do uh, when you are giving answers for these questions, okay? You want to answer, explain, and give an example. You should always have that kind of spinning in your head and then stop, okay? Don't over speak. So uh, I still at times um, hear candidates over speaking where they talk a bit too much and the examiner has to interrupt them. So uh, let's uh, take a peek, a little bit a closer peek at these questions. Again, um, students, if you ever have uh, an inquiry for me, you can send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com, okay? Um, and I will get back to you usually within 24 hours or one of my colleagues. Um, okay, so here we go. IELTS speaking part one, all right? Uh, and again, uh, make sure to do a lot of repetition in this class, okay? Repeat whenever you can. So copy my intonation, my pronunciation as best as you can, okay? All right, so here we go. When you go into your IELTS speaking exam, the examiner will ask you for the identification that you used during the registration phase and the same ID that you used when you checked in 20 minutes before sitting for your interview. So um, here, the examiner will start off by asking, uh, may I see your identification? Give a nice, full sentence answer for this question, okay? So Javid Sherbeck, don't jump ahead. Um, start with this question, okay? All right, and Arda, I'm sad to read that you broke your finger. That can be painful. I've done it myself a couple of times in basketball. All right, so may i see your identification nice full sentence answer use these questions to remind yourself to be fluent okay so don't just go yes or sure it's like okay um if you give a really short answer like yes or sure uh, the examiner is going to be like oh it's going to be one of these interviews where i'm going to have to pull information from the student okay so you want to give some nice full sentence answers. Uh, Saeed Ansari uh, gives this answer here. Uh, yes, of course, here's my passport that I used to register for this exam. Please have a look. Saeed, that is a good answer, okay? It's clear, it's accurate. It's uh, polite, it's professional, it works. So here we go, repeat after me, students. Yes, of course. Here's my passport that I used to register for this exam, please have a look. Very nice. And even the use of that instead of which here is more accurate. Okay. 
Very nice. All right. Uh, Simran7903 says, I'll just take a couple for this starting question here. So uh, Simran says, uh, yes, sure, sir. Here is my passport, which I used to register for my exam about a couple of weeks ago. Please have a look. Yeah, that works. Definitely. Okay, polite, to the point, fluent. Okay, make sure you're fluent with these. And then the next question always um, is, what is your full name? And the hidden question that they only ask you if you don't say is, what should I call you? Okay. So they won't actually ask you that question if you answer it, but they will ask you if you don't tell them what to call you. So to show that you're prepared and you got ready for the exam and you learned a bit about the structure and the nature of the exam, you should definitely tell them what to call you, okay? Because if you don't, the examiner's kind of thinking like, oh, did this person even prepare for this exam? Like, do they know what's going to be happening here, all right? Lionel Oliver says, my first name is Lionel, my family name is Oliver, but you can address me by my nickname, Lee. Okay. All right, um, so that's not what I wanted to copy. Here we go. This is the answer by uh, Lionel. Okay. So a couple of slight corrections and adjustments here, Lionel, pay attention. So again, the question is, what is your full name and what should I call you? Okay, uh, my first name is Lionel, beautiful name, meaning lion. And uh, my family name is Oliver. Um, I don't recommend uh, doing this, but you can, okay? This, uh, but you can is a bit, um, it's, it's a bit awkward. It's a bit almost impolite to a person that you don't know. It's like, it's like, oh, this is my name, but you can call me this instead of my actual name. So maybe in some English speaking cultures, they don't take it so personally, but I know that for instance, in Canadian or American culture, you, saying, but you can call me, can come across kind of awkwardly, even though it's correct English, it's kind of like, oh, but you don't want me to call you by your actual name then? Um, so there's a more polite way to do this, Lionel, and I want you to pay attention because I know a lot of students do this, but you can call me or you can address me. Okay, so uh, instead, you should do, my first name is uh, Lionel and my family name is Oliver. Please uh, address me by my uh, nickname. Nickname is one word. Nickname Lee, okay? And then you are coming across as a bit more polite, all right? So again, uh, what is your full name? My first name is Lionel and my family name is Oliver. Please address me by my nickname, Lee, okay? All right. Um, Let's take another one here by Saeed Ansari. He's got a little bit of a different approach, but it looks good. So this is what Saeed says for his introduction. Now, of course, your introduction has to be perfect. If you don't sound perfect introducing your name, it's going to be virtually impossible to get those high band scores because the examiner is thinking, well, if this person can't introduce their name clearly in English, then where are we going here? So uh, my full name is MD Saeed Ansari. Please call me Saeed, um, that my friends call me. Uh, that's what uh, my friends call me. Uh, now here, when you say this in English, you're kind of indirectly also telling the person that you are my friend now. Um, I think it's maybe a little bit strange to kind of impose your friendship onto the examiner. 
Um, but yeah, it's okay. I, I mean, I, I, if I were your examiner, I'd be like, all right, they're just being really friendly. I'm your friend now. Um, so my full name is uh, Saeed Ansari. Please call me Saeed. That's what my friends call me. That kind of means like you're also my friend. So call me that. Okay. So if you want your examiner to kind of be your friend or feel like they're your friend, you can say that. Um, it's not totally weird, but you should be aware that with this sentence, Saeed, you're basically telling them that you've become my new friend. Okay. All right. So keep that in mind. Okay. And be accurate with these. Okay. Uh, students, um, let's, uh, let's practice this together. So I, I would like to start this week off with some uh, strong speaking practice with students. And I will give you more tips, more strategies, uh, as we move through the lesson and as I um, speak with actual students. So I'm looking for volunteers to answer all of these questions on television today. Um, and to volunteer, you need to follow uh, these steps, okay? So first of all, let me jump back to the PowerPoint here. It's got a bit of a better way of showing you this. So um, to uh, volunteer, um, follow these steps, okay? Uh, register a free or paid account at aehelp.com, okay? Um, log into your My Student account. Click on Student Partner Speaking. Enable your microphone in your browser. I keep the window open and then message master. You'll see master, that's going to be my handle. Uh, I want to volunteer. Here, let me show you uh, what I mean by that. So here's our website, okay? On the website, there's two ways to register. You can register a free account with this green button, and it's absolutely a good way to start if you wanna just try it for free first. Um, by the way, the speaking is 100% free, everyone, okay? Uh, you do not have to pay a single cent to use the speaking interface. We just want students to practice their speaking. Uh, or to get all of our materials, which is a great idea, click the big red button. Once you do that, you'll have a My Student account that's kind of more up at the top of the page there. You see that My Student account uh, right there, uh, way up at the top. So you log in, okay, and then uh, you can end the tour and now you will see a button like this, this student partner speaking. If you're on mobile, this is kind of what it will look like. If you're on a uh, desktop, it will look like this. And then you click that student partner speaking uh, button, accept the terms. And this is about the point where it will ask you to um, accept uh, that you can, well, sorry, I should say it will uh, ask you to allow the use of your microphone and your speakers. So you have to do that. And the first time that you're using this, I really strongly recommend trying this system with another student in here just to make sure you can hear uh, the other person and you can use the microphone, they can hear you. And then um, you will see, well, you'll see this long list at this point, okay? Um, and in this long list, you can send me a message. You'll see master, and then you can send me a message and write, I want to volunteer. And then we can practice uh, these questions together in the class. I can see there's already some students volunteering. So let me reach out and see if we can get a hold of someone, okay? All right, so I have Du Yin, du Yin uh, uh, here, and it looks like Du Yin's uh, volunteering. So let me kind of see if I can reach out to Du Yin. Du Yin says, I'm ready, I can volunteer. Okay, um, so are you ready? I think Du Yin's writing right now. Are you ready? All right. Okay, no worries, Arda. So yeah, volunteer if you know you feel up for it, no pressure. And um, here we go, DN says yes. No pressure. Hello. Hi, DN. 
Yes, I'm here. How are you? Um, good today. Awesome. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. It's early morning Wednesday for me. Uh, where yes. are you, Duyen? I'm from Vietnam. Okay. What part of Vietnam? Uh, I'm living in the North City. Okay. All right. Um, so, Duyen, the way this works is I'm going to ask you a, a speaking part one question. And just give me a nice full sentence answer and I will reflect and give you some feedback on it, okay? Yes. All right. So, um, here we go. This is a very common icebreaker question in the IELTS exam when you're sitting there. Uh, let me just kind of start from the very beginning. So, uh, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test and I will give you instructions for each of the three parts. For part one, I will ask you a couple questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. May I see your identification? Du Yen, may I see your identification? Uh, yes, uh, sir. Here my passport, which I used to re register uh, for exam IELTS. Have and, what is, and what is your full name? Um, my full name is Tao Yihuli Tao Yuan. Uh, you can call me Yuan for short. Yuan, okay. And do you work yes. or study? Uh, yes, uh, I'm studying. I have been studying English uh, major in the Nang University. Uh, in the Nang University. To uh, in order to improve uh, improve English major improve English major as well as uh, interpreting and translating uh, what do you like to do in your leisure time uh, in my free time, I can relax uh, with listen to music uh, with my friends, and I can to I can go to beach. Uh, Let's talk about television. Okay, Duyen, um Good. We'll stop there for now, and I'll give you a little bit of feedback. Okay. Yes, thank you. All right, so uh, not bad. I can tell you're a bit nervous, which is totally okay. Uh, you're speaking um, with a lot of people listening. Uh, and it's, you know, the real IELTS exam is similar in this way that uh, there's a lot of pressure and uh, students really want to perform. So it's easy to be nervous, but you know, you want to be confident. So uh, that would be about a band five, uh, 4.5 to five, okay, for your IELTS score. Uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, the reason your band score is a 4.5 to 5 is because of your fluency. So you are not considered a fluent speaker of English with these answers. Uh, band 6 is where fluent uh, English speakers start. So if you look at the IELTS band descriptors, for band six, it says fluent English user. That means that, you know, you have to be able to talk without stopping awkwardly for English uh, words or grammar. And um, for these questions, and they don't really care if it's because you're nervous or not. Unfortunately, that doesn't matter in this situation. So what I recommend, first of all, is just make sure to finish your sentence. Okay, you don't have to speak fast. So you can get a band six even speaking slower as long as you complete your answer. You have to complete your answer. So do you work or study? Um, and then you said, yes, I'm, I have been. Uh, if you start with yes, I am, um, then just finish with that. So don't switch from present simple to present perfect in the mid sentence, okay? You can show them present perfect later on. Does that make sense? I 
I think maybe Duyan's having a little bit of trouble hearing me. Duyan, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I'm here. Yeah. So Duyan, um, you don't have to switch your grammar in the middle of the sentence. That's not a good idea because it's awkward. So if you start with I am, then finish with mm -hmm. I am. Okay, so you can yeah. say I am studying uh, an English major, right? So don't switch to present perfect in the middle of the sentence. So I'm studying uh, an English major in Danan University in order to improve uh, my communication, instead of repeating here, my uh, communication uh, skills um, and uh, to become uh, certified for interpreting and translating. Yes. Um, and then you kind of had this awkward stop here where it felt like you wanted to say something but you weren't sure what to say or how to say it, okay? Um, so, uh, and you should say something like, after I graduate. Yes, I, I can say, um, because I plan to work as diplomat in the future, sure. in and fact, then... I will be yeah, and then just stop there. Don't don't over speak for the beginning. So you can say uh, because, uh, because I plan I, to work. I plan as, to work as a diplomat in the future. Uh, in fact, I will be hitting the board after he after this exam for next week's class C. I, I don't recommend saying that last part. It's you're kind of over speaking. It's just the warm up question. So you don't have to go that far. It's more important to show your fluency. Okay. And then what do you like to do in your leisure time? Uh, in my free time. And then here you had some grammatical mistakes that were a little bit awkward. So um, I like to relax uh, and listen to music. Um, with my friends was a bit awkward, I thought. Um, or hang out uh, with my friends and go to the beach. And let's just stop there. So I'm going to uh, say these last two questions and answers and then just repeat after me, okay? So here we go. Uh, do you work or study? Yes, I am studying an English major in Danan University in order to improve my communication skills and to become certified for interpreting and translating because I plan to work as a foreign diplomat in the future. Uh, do you work or study? Yes, I'm studying English major in Danan University in order to improve my communication skills and to become certified for interpreting and translating because I plan to work as a foreign diplomat in the future. Certified. Certified. Much better. What do you like to do in your leisure time? Um, in my free time, I like to relax and listen to music or hang out with my friends and go to the beach. Uh, what do you like to do in your leisure time? In my free time, I like to relax and listen to music or hang out with my friends and go to a beach. Nice. Okay. Very good. Much better. All right. Um, much better. So practice lots of speaking and just practice start and finish. So start what you're saying, finish what you're saying confidently. Don't keep thinking about more, more, more. Just have one complete idea and then wait for the next question and you'll get a better score. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, this is the second time I call with you. Uh, the first time I uh, I have a good I have a, a feedback uh, for me. Uh, so, uh, but uh, I improve. Yes. Awesome. Okay, keep it up, doing. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's how you do it, right? You keep volunteering, you keep improving. Have a great rest of your night in Vietnam. Yes. Thank Bye. you. All right, um, some thumbs up, uh, viewers, subscribers, uh, members. Um, Yun was really brave uh, to be our first volunteer this week. Let's take somebody else. Um, okay, so here we have Camilla. Um, let's see, Camilla says, I want to volunteer. Um, okay, Camilla, are you ready? So again, students, remember strong start, okay, strong start. 
um, in speaking part one, uh, answer these uh, icebreaker questions clearly and accurately, okay? Don't try to uh, impress the examiner too much at the start, okay? Just focus on clarity. Hopefully we can get a hold of Camilla. Hi. Hi, Camilla. Hi, sir. How are you? I'm good. What about you? Still doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. Uh, where are you, Camilla? Um, where where I'm from? Yeah. Which country um, are you in? Which city? I'm from Kazakhstan. You're from Kazakhstan. Which city in Kazakhstan? Um, from the capital city of Kazakhstan, Nur Sultan. Nur Sultan, very nice. All right, a very, very progressive city from what I hear in the world today. Okay, um, all right. So Camilla, I will ask you a question. Give me a nice full sentence answer with confidence, start to finish. Think about answer, explanation, and example, okay? Okay. All right. Um, Let's talk about television. How often do you watch TV? Uh, well, these days, um, I think I never watch TVs because like, it's considered like old-fashioned um, concept for me. Uh, for example, I, I would prefer to watch um, some series from my laptop because um, it's more convenient for me. Yeah. Okay, just a sec. All right, I think I caught most of what you said. Uh, not bad, okay, not bad. So that would be like a band 6.5. Some examiner might give you a six, but I feel like your English should be marked as a band seven to 7.5. Okay, but you need to show me that. If you want to get your actual score, um, then you have to show that to me. So you have to change your communication style a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. um, so one way to do that is just to practice for the IELTS exam, Camilla. Uh, the Ooh. IELTS exam is not like having a usual daily conversation with a friend or a coworker or a student. It's a little bit different. It is structured. It's, it has the three parts. Each part is slightly different and has different expectations. So if you're familiar with what to do, you can do a lot better, I think. Um, the question is how often do you watch TV? Uh, firstly, you want to really just target the question, okay? So it's easy to think very broadly or very honestly or even off topic about some of these questions, especially when we aren't closely connected to the question as what you just said. Like you told me that, well, these days you never watch TV and then you started to change into the explanation, the reason why you never watch TV, right? Because it's considered mm -hmm. old fashioned and you're using your laptop. But then by going that direction with the explanation, you eventually lost the original question, which was how often do you watch TV? Um, and you started to focus more on why you watch a series on your laptop, right? And it's yeah. easy for us to do that in conversation. It's a very common part of our human nature to express what we want to say rather than what the listener wants to hear. Do you understand what I mean by that? Yeah. So, so it's like we start thinking about what I want to tell you instead of what you really want to know. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying, right? So on the IELTS exam, you really have to focus on this communication of like, I will tell you what you, what you are asking me. I will tell you what you want to know. And then you can easily bump up your band score by like one band or even more. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let me show you what I mean. So, um, 
I would have done this in your case, somewhat similar. So these days, that's a good start. Uh, I never watch TV. I, and be affirmative. Don't don't be in English. We say wishy washy. Do you know this expression, wishy washy? Mm, no. Okay. When we say wishy washy, it means we lack clarity. Like, um, well, I think I kind of I kind oh. of feel like, and it's kind of like, okay, mm -hmm. do you or don't you? <laughs> right. So, um, so yeah. being wishy washy is is it's it's an expression which means uncertain or un lack certainty. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, we say, I don't know how to, sp I never write this, but wishy-washy, I think it's like that, uh, means uncertainty, okay? All right, so you don't want to be uncertain. In the IELTS, you want to be really just confident, okay? So these yeah. days, I never watch TV. We don't count TV, Camilla. It's, I never watch TV, not TVs, okay? Or I never watch TV shows or programming, mm -hmm. okay? Um, because... Uh, not it is considered don't speak for others or general public just speak for yourself okay especially in part one uh, because I consider it old-fashioned um, I mean so here I would say like why you consider it old-fashioned so stay with the concept of the TV right I mean I am forced uh, to watch commercials uh, and um, pre-programmed shows, uh, pre-programmed series. Uh, so the last time I watched the TV was about uh, six months ago uh, when I was waiting at the airport. Okay, and I had nothing else to do. Notice I just stay with the question. So I'm staying with what I'm being asked instead of kind of going off on other topics of watching my laptop, Netflix, Amazon Prime, or whatever else it may be, right? Um, so here, uh, with the question of how often, when you're asked this question, think qualitative, like never, and then think numbers, once a year, okay? Um, here we go. I'm going to say this and then just repeat after me. Does that sound good, Camilla? Yeah, okay. All right, so how often do you watch TV? These days I never watch TV shows because I consider it old fashioned. I mean, I'm forced to watch commercials and pre-programmed series. The last time I watched the TV was once six months ago when I was waiting at the airport and I had nothing else to do. How often do you watch TV? These days I never watch TV shows because I consider it old fashioned. I mean, I'm forced to watch commercials and pre-programmed series. So the last time I watched the TV was about six months ago when I was waiting at the airport and I had nothing else to do. Much better, okay? If you said that like that, that would be a band nine, all right? So do you mm -hmm. see what I mean? Like in the IELTS, so my, my most important tip to you as you're practicing this and getting ready for your exam is really think about the question and not necessarily what you want to say, but what the question is asking you, what the examiner wants to hear, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. yeah, okay. All right, okay, any questions, Camilla? Mm, I think I have no questions. <laughs> All right, I just kind of sprung that on you. All right, remember wishy washy. Don't be wishy washy. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. All right, Camilla, thank you so much for volunteering. Have an awesome rest of your day in Nur Sultan. Uh, thank you, Adrian. Okay, bye for now. All right. Bye bye. That was Camilla. You can give Camilla a thumbs up, everybody. Support each other in this very nerve-wracking, very stressful situation of practicing uh, for the IELTS exam. We got uh, Joao. I, and by the way, I hope everybody's taking notes so I don't write everything down that I say, um, but uh, you should be taking notes. And that was an important one. You know what? In, in, I will write that down in a moment. Um, that you should answer the questions directly and think about what the listener wants to hear rather than what you want to say, okay? All right, uh, Joao. Let's see if Joao is here. Um, sure, are you ready? We've got uh, 
Lots of different volunteers from different parts of the world. Thanks for the thumbs up, Divya, Sunny, Mal, Cass. I can see all those thumbs up and claps for Camilla. That's great. Okay, good. Way to show your support. Here we go. Hey, sir, can you hear me? I can hear you, Joao. How yeah. are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm also doing great. Thanks for <laughs> reflecting the questions. Very polite. Yeah, yeah. No um, problem. Joao, where are you in this world? Uh, from Portugal. From Portugal. So we're moving westward. We started in Vietnam, then Kazakhstan. Now we're all the way to Portugal. That's great. Yeah. All right. Um, and uh, what do you do, Joao, may I ask? Uh, I'm now working and studying at, at the same time. Yeah. What do you study? Um, I'm, study I'm studying programming. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, okay, Joao. So I will ask you a question um, still on the topic of TV. And uh, just give me a nice full oh. sentence answer, okay? And I will give you some feedback after. Sounds good? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You can All just right. call me. You can just call me Joe. Joe. Instead All right. of yeah. All right. Okay. All right, Joe. Um, so, Joe, uh, what is your favorite TV show? Um, I would definitely have to say maybe Hawaii Five O, um, because it's it's very um, related to to crimes and and action TV TV series, and that's something something that I'm definitely uh, interested in. Um, other related shows would be something like Criminal Minds. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to add here. Um, yeah. All right, Joe. Uh, not bad. You're very fluent. Um, I would say that was a solid 7 to 7.5 answer. But I think for you, what I'm feeling is that your band score should be near perfect. It should be a band 8.5 to 9. So again, it's just focusing on communicative style. Okay. And this is kind of true for a lot of um, candidates who get up over this band 6. Um, uh, uh, level where you can actually improve by a band score even more just by changing the way you respond to these. So let me tell you why or what I mean. Okay. So I asked you, what is your favorite TV show? And you said, I would definitely have to say maybe Hawaii Five-O. Uh, careful with um, this kind of phrasing. I would definitely have to say, and then saying maybe after is awkward because you're using the word definitely right? Yeah, and then yeah. you're saying maybe. And even though we might do that in a typical daily conversation with a friend, in professional communication, that's awkward. So for a band eight or a band nine, you have to speak very clearly and concisely. Okay, so it's either I would definitely have to say or maybe I would say, but you wouldn't say both, okay, because they're opposites of each other. So let's take out that maybe. Um, I would definitely have to say, be affirmative, be confident. So again, it's kind of what I just told Camilla, right? Don't be wishy-washy, just be affirmative, okay? I'm mm -hmm. going to make yeah. this note for everybody so we don't have a repeat of this. So be confident and affirmative uh, with your answers in IELTS. It's just like um, uh, in this case, or in this sense, it's like um, a job interview. Uh, I'm sure you heard this advice from your parents or from others that when you go to a job interview, you have to be confident when you're giving answers. Have you heard that advice before? Yeah, yeah. Same for the IELTS. You should be confident with your answers. Okay, so be confident and affirmative. Okay, it's again, don't be wishy washy. Um, so I would definitely have to say Hawaii Five-O. Uh, by the way, for uh, our viewers out there, Five-O is um, a synonym meaning police. I can't remember where it comes from, but it means police, okay? So when you say Five-O to an English speaker, that means you see the police, okay? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like saying cop. There, there, if, you, if I say to my friend, there comes the Five-O, I'm telling him there comes the police, okay? So I would definitely have to say Hawaii Five-O. Yeah, it sounded better than 
calling the show Hawaii Police, I guess. Um, so I would have to, I would definitely have to say Hawaii Five O because it's um, related to crime and action, um, and it's fun for me to watch. Okay, and then here you switched to another answer. You said other related shows would be something like Criminal Minds, um, and you lost the question because the question is what is your favorite TV show? So that's all I want to know, right? Is your favorite, that's okay. just one, right? So it's fun for me to watch uh, when I have some downtime. In fact, I just watched uh, two episodes last evening okay and you stay with the show from start to finish um oh i deleted this but you also said um i don't know what else to say do yeah, not say that in IELTS. okay so yeah. do, do not say just imagine if you're in a job interview and somebody asks you what skills do you bring to this office and then you say well <laughs> i'm punctual and I'm hardworking, and I really don't know what else to say. The, you know, the boss might be like, uh, okay. <laughs> so you, you don't want to do that in the IELTS either, right? So in this yeah. sense, the IELTS is kind of like a job interview. Okay, you have to stay focused, professional, and goal-oriented, right? Okay, let me uh, ask the question, give this answer, and then just repeat after me, okay? Yeah, sure. All right, here we go. Uh, what is your favorite TV show, why? I would definitely have to say Hawaii Five O because it's related to crime and action, and it's fun for me to watch when I have some downtime. In fact, I just saw two episodes last evening. What is your favorite TV show and why? Uh, I would definitely have to say Hawaii Five O because it's related to crime and action, and it's fun for me to watch when I have some downtime. Uh, in fact, I just saw um, two episodes last evening. Very nice. Yeah, great. Uh, and see now. When you do it like that, it's a band nine, very clearly, very fluent, accurate, smooth English. And I can tell that that's the range you should be in. So make yeah. sure to show that range, okay? Um, I'm also studying English at, uh, at a school. And one of my biggest hurdles is uh, definitely speaking too fast. I, I think you, you, you may notice that. And second is basically, I try to, to, to tell all at once and then I have to fill in the time like, I, like I've just said, I, I don't have anything to, el to add because I try to, to speak everything at the same time and then it's like feeling in the time, you know, because, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, here's the good news. Um, you have taken the first step to improving this part of your communication by recognizing that, you know, that's where you have difficulty. So now it's just a matter of slowing yourself down, right? So what you want to do is stop yourself, re-say what you wanted to say, slow yourself down, focus a bit more on accuracy and having a more coherent, complete answer, right? Yeah, and, and a, a good on you for recognizing that you don't have to speak fast uh, for great communication, okay? Yeah. All right, thank you so much for uh, volunteering. Have an awesome rest of your day, Joe. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Have a nice day. You too, bye-bye. All right, so give Joe some thumbs up. Udit Raj, welcome to our group of members. I just saw you join in to our group of members. Love John Colwinder, make sure to volunteer as well. I haven't forgotten about our general English help channel either. Okay, all right. Um, let's see, uh, we have uh, Tatiana here, one of our regular viewers. Let me reach out. I'm just kind of clicking on the next one. So let's catch Tatiana here. Okay, are you ready? And we'll be moving a little bit back towards the east in this case because Tatiana is in Russia, if I'm not mistaken. If Tatiana is still there with us this morning, well, my morning, your evening or night time, I think. I can see Tatiana in the chat. All right, Tatiana is ready. Okay, Tatiana, here we go. Good morning, dear Adrian. Hi, Tatiana. How are you? I'm doing great. It's public holiday in Russia, the defenders of the Motherland Day. 
we are congratulating our men, treating them, giving them presents, yada, yada, yada. Oh, nice. I wish I were in Russia today then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, we just had a long weekend ourselves here this last weekend. It was a family day long weekend. Oh which encourages families to get together uh -huh. and spend quality family time together. So our Sounds big... nice to you. Yeah, we, we got our older daughter a new hamster. That was one of our big... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a new pet in the house. It's cool. spinning, spinning her little wheel all night. It's new noise oh. to get used to. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay, Tatiana, well, thank you for volunteering again. Um, you're doing great. My pleasure being consistent. So let's continue here. I'm going to ask you a question. Um, give me a nice full sentence answer, okay? Uh, I'll give okay. you a little hint here uh, beforehand. <clears throat> As you answer this question, take a moment to visualize, visually see your answer, okay? So here we go. Um, where in the house do you keep your TV? Mm, in my apartment, uh, we've got a big TV screen in the living room. It's uh, hanging on the wall in front of the uh, big cozy couch. And uh, there is a coffee table in between, so it's convenient to watch wild streams on this TV screen or to turn it on uh, while uh, gathering together. Okay, I caught oh. most of that. Um, all right. Cozy. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, so let me repeat what you said. That was very good. Um, and you know what, Tatiana? I actually, it was really interesting the way you answered this uh, question um, right after Joe, um, because I, I hope Joe's watching this because this was actually a perfect example of how to speak slowly and get a high band score. So that would be like a band eight, okay? And I think, Tatiana, I think Tatiana, if you hadn't kept going, like if you would have stopped with um, mm -hmm. a cozy couch even, mm -hmm. you could have stopped as early as cozy couch before mm. So It's Convenient. I think the So It's Convenient was okay, but not absolutely necessary here um, because the question was really just focusing on uh, where um, mm -hmm. I thought I should throw the example I thought it's a must um, it's not a it's not always a must um, and in this case the example uh, yeah I mean here you're still explaining why it hangs there right um, mm -hmm. but uh, rather but the than, question is where yeah the question is 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 where right okay. and you answered that very I well see. so <laughs> you started slow um, you know I did give you a little bit of a tip there to really visualize it but you started slow and, and that was good you did not rush the answer and so you gave some really good description and describing locations especially so where a place is located in your city or where an item is located in your home that can be tricky so it's definitely one of those questions where you want to approach it slowly and carefully uh, because it's easy to make mistakes if you do not whether you're a native speaker or not Okay, so you said, hmm, in my apartment, we've got a big TV screen in the living room. Very nice, so you gave me the general location. Um, it's hanging uh, on the uh, wall in front of uh, a big cozy couch. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and I have a mental block on spelling cozy for some reason. I'm sure somebody's gonna help me out here. Um, a cozy couch and I, th I thought that was enough like I really visual and then you said I think a coffee table as well is in front of the couch yeah it is between uh, the TV and the couch yeah cozy yeah. is spelled like uh, Z-Y yeah <laughs> thank you cozy couch um, and there is a coffee uh, table, table in between in between yeah mm-hmm Sure. Um, beautiful. And that's beautiful description because now I can literally see your living room. It's kind of, a, you know, your standard living room, but mm -hmm. you described it very well with very good use of prepositions and uh, very good structure. So it was quite easy uh, for me to, uh, to see this, to visualize it, right? Mm -hmm. To 
pictured in my head. And I think that's great. Um, so I would, I would just even take out the rest of that here and keep it there. So let's do this. Let me just say the answer one more time, repeat it nice and fluently, and then you've got a perfect score, I think. Um, here we go. Where in the house do you keep your TV? Hmm, in my apartment, we've got a big TV screen in the living room. It's hanging on the wall in front of the big cozy couch. <clears throat> Sorry, and there is a coffee table in between. Um, where in the house do you keep your TV? Uh, in my apartment, we've got a big TV screen in the living room. It's hanging on the wall in front of the big cozy couch. And there's a coffee table in between. Perfect. That, that's it. Perfect. And that's oh, a band sorry. Nine. And what, what about uh, the article, should I say, the big or a big cozy couch? Uh, articles um, are pain. <laughs> It, articles are a pain, but you don't have to worry about them too, too much, Tatiana. Um, even among English uh, speakers, we have disagreements. <laughs> like a good example of it is Canadians will say, um, what did you do on the weekend? And British will say, what did you do at the weekend? And we have lots of discrepancies, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. So especially in spoken English, we don't worry about them too much. As long as it's not very strange or awkward to all English speakers, uh -huh. Uh, we wouldn't worry about prepositions or articles too much. So here, uh -huh. if you say in front of the big cozy couch or a big cozy couch, it doesn't really matter because a would mean it's just some couch. The means it's the couch that you love and it's yours and it's your special couch. So I wouldn't take a mark for saying the big couch instead of a big couch. Okay, mm -hmm. so don't okay. don't get lost in, in that level. As of long as it doesn't uh, uh, impede communicate, uh, uh, ruin communication. As long as it doesn't make communication incoherent, which for mm -hmm. articles would be very rare. In writing, you have more time. There are more rules, um, so it gets a little bit more important, and trickier. But in spoken English, don't worry too much about articles. It was a good okay. question. Okay. All right. Um, and just a little bit more on your answer. The we uh, we've got um, is a nice use of present perfect. And the cozy couch, instead of just saying couch, is good use of descriptive language. Okay. So it's a great answer. All right. Keep it up. Thank you. Okay, Tatiana, have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you, Ramon. The same to you. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye bye. Okay. All right. That was Tatiana. Um, okay, everyone. And um, that's all the time that I have uh, for today. But that doesn't mean that you should give up. Uh, we've got three more questions here. Um, we've got Is it healthy for children to watch TV? Um, have TV shows changed? since you were a child and if you could make a tv show what would it be i highly highly um recommend practicing these last three questions with some of your fellow classmates and viewers on the chat you can chat with each other not just me in this interface okay so uh, reach out to each other and just message the person would you like to practice these last three questions with me and i'm sure that many of you will be up for the challenge and you will have less pressure you won't have 300 people listening at the same time it will just be the two of you uh, so um, be polite, be respectful, speak in full sentences, and we've got lots more speaking coming up this week. So if you did not um, get a chance to speak with me today, uh, do not worry about it because we have more speaking coming up. Um, in fact, uh, let me just check our... Um, yeah, so we've got speaking part two coming up tomorrow, okay, the long part. So you will be able to join me for that. Um, and again, everybody, remember uh, to visit us, aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. On our websites, um, all you have to do to become a premium member is click this big red join now button. You will see that at both aehelp.com and gltshelp.com. It's definitely worth it. Um, check that out. And uh, once again, I will be back tomorrow with reading for members and more speaking for our uh, viewers and subscribers. 
Rashika, Udit, Tatiana, Mall members, thank you for your support. Carolina, thank you for moderating. Thank you everyone for watching. Much love to all of you wherever you are in the world today, right now. Bye.